speaking with John Henry Sullivan. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us on the show. Well, thank you so much for letting me be here today. Well, we're glad to have you on the show, and we hope to give voters in Harlington a chance to get to know what you're about. You're running for the office of first electman in Harlington. Uh, I got to look at your your uh, your biography, your resume, as it were, and and you've led a long and and varied career. You've tried a lot of different things. You've had you know some great success, be it uh, as a minister, as a business person, studied architecture, Naval Academy, and I'm intrigued by what brings someone with a, a wide, varied scope like yours to Harwinton and to run for the office of first selectman. What has intrigued you to run for this job? It, it's exactly the fact that I've had these varied experiences that when I look at government in general and, and small town municipal government in particular, uh, I, I see some of the experience that I have lacking. Mm -hmm. um, I see people who have spent a lifetime in public service, which is a, an admirable thing, but they don't have the architectural experience I have, or I see them doing something else and they don't have the business experience. Um, so when the last election cycle happened in, in the end of 2008, I was looking uh, in particular at the Republican Party, I'm a lifetime Republican, mm -hmm. and I saw even the Republicans lacking in, in the kind of leadership that, that draws me in, and I uh, thought at that point that, you know, this, this is an opportunity where I can take what I've, I've learned and I can start to give back. Now, with the various things that you've done, you obviously feel that this helps prepare you for the leadership position of being first selectman. It puts you in a, a unique position or a ready position to run for this office and to, to bring some leadership to town. I do. Now, Harwinton is a, one of those towns that, that I've been very interested in watching because it is still a very rural town, but geographically it's placed in a really, really attractive area because it's not far from the highways or from the capital, but far enough away to still be out in the country. As a result, there's a lot of people who have sought to move there, a lot of people who find it a very desirable place to live. There's a lot of development pressure, um, and, but at the same time, people want to maintain what makes Harwinton beautiful. Your thoughts on that and the kinds of priorities you see that the First Selectman's Office ought to be keying in on? You've described the situation very well. I mean, just like realtors always say, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. Harrington is two hours from Midtown Manhattan, it's two hours from Midtown Boston, uh, and yet it has this great access. Uh, the overwhelming majority of people there want to keep the rural charm and character. Uh, they do not want to see uh, developments like strip shopping malls uh, along Route 4 or, or 118. I agree with this completely. I'm committed to keeping this rural character there. But I'm concerned that Harrington in just trying to keep its own character to itself is becoming blind to the pressures from the seven other towns that touch on it. Uh, Torrington certainly, to me, is a great advantage having it right next door to us because Torrington can be the market center. Right. So that Harrington doesn't have to overdevelop in that kind of way. I mean, it's, it's a five minute trip, trip for most of us. Mm -hmm. Um, but as Torrington continues to get its act together and continues to grow up East Main Street, this changes the traffic pattern in Harrington. So here's a town that wants to stay rural, and yet our neighbor's growth is now impacting on, on our desires. So my concern for the town is that it really needs a, a, a comprehensive strategic plan, not only on what to do for itself, but how it's going to deal with the growth uh, of its immediate neighbors and, and how that impact is going to uh, affect us. As I understand you, you've had a chance to sit in on uh, meetings of the boards and commissions in town. You've uh, spent quite a bit of time getting familiar with uh, these various boards and what they do and, and what some of their challenges are. Um, you've been surprised by that process, haven't you, with, very, with how big, really, local government is? Very much so. Um, and there's obviously a lot of uh, moving pieces. And one of the things I would like to do as first selectman is to uh, seriously uh, inspire and attract uh, more people to participate. Um, as wonderful as the, the core of volunteers are who, who are on most of the commissions and, and committees, there's a lot of work in each one of those. And uh, 
you know, apathy is, is the biggest enemy to, to all public officials. Uh, people only come at the last meeting or the referendum and want to know, you know, why this is going on. Well, the right. process has been, you know, in motion for a year or more, going from committee to committee to committee. And I, I do think it's, it's vital to a small town like Harrington to inspire people to, to get on board. And uh, that would be a, a big focus of mine. Are there better ways to communicate things that are happening in the town? I mean, we rely on the local media to, to do so. You rely on um, you know, public notices, which have to go in the publications anyway. But what are some of your thoughts on how to get that word out in a more effective way? I, I believe, like John Adams said years ago, that, that in order for democracy to, to flourish, that people need to read, write, and think. Therefore, the press is vital, the media, what we're doing today is vital. However, the average family today is dual income. They, they work all day long. They, they race home to get children up from uh, daycare. Then they try to get food on the table. It becomes almost impossible for them to make a 7 o'clock meeting on a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday. Um, I seriously want to uh, videotape all the major committee meetings and get them on the town website so that at midnight when the parents are about to go to sleep they can say you know something there was a big meeting today I need to see what was going on because when you just look at the the minutes of meetings um, it's not enough to say that this committee met at seven o'clock and these were the three things on our agenda and we closed at eight o'clock that doesn't tell a citizen anything and even if you took word for word down if there was a way you know to to uh, uh, tape record their voices and transcribe that right. you can't you don't get the nuance you don't get the feeling behind uh, words. So you need to see, I'm sorry, facial expressions. You need to see if people are, are being aggressive or, or passionate. And um, so I, I think video camera, the technology exists. I know that Madison is doing it right now. I, I, I've thought to do this for quite a while and I was, I read about a month ago in the uh, paper that Madison, uh, Connecticut's doing this. So I, this is something I want to do for Harmonton. You have a running mate, of course, Michael Chris, who's a, a lifelong resident of Harlington, and um, we have a, a, um, a brochure as well of your, your campaign for uh, uh, Sullivan Chris for the November election. And, and I guess you have a pledge that you're taking as part of your, uh, your campaign, and you're going to post it as well if you're uh, successful in, in November. Um, and if you wanted to work some of that in in the last two minutes we have of the interview so people know what you want to bring to the office, feel free to do so. But um, you've been doing some campaigning. You've had a chance to speak to people. What kinds of uh, are you finding the same things that we're talking about here today? Be they development, uh, be they um, uh, communications on what happens in town government. Are these the same kinds of concerns you're finding from the constituents? Yes. This is from knocking on many doors and, and being open-minded to what people are saying. Um, we're getting a, a, a wonderful response. I'm, I'm thrilled to be Michael Chris's running mate. Uh, he brings a lot to the table, um, and as you alluded, we, we have made a pledge that uh, I can read over quickly right now. Why don't you go right ahead and do that? Uh, we pledge to set high standards in all that we do on behalf of the people in the town of Harrington and to act in their best interests at all times. Two, to make all public municipal information clearly understood and easily accessible in a timely manner to all citizens without favoritism or prejudice. Three, to protect preserve and defend the rural character and the unique qualities of Harrington that the community holds dear. Four, to be vigilant in overseeing the fair and equal assessment of property taxes. Five, to avoid unnecessary spending of the taxpayer money and work toward fair negotiations for the town. Six, to encourage a broader base of citizens to actively participate in town government. And finally, we will consider it a top priority to work closely with the governor's office and other state and federal agencies to maximize greater benefits for a better future for Harmington. Well, you certainly got a full plate there. We do. Uh, we're just about uh, out of time on the on the show. Any final thoughts? Uh, thoughts we could leave the voters in Harmington with Harmington, of course, one of the local elections we'll be following closely here, as you uh, take this campaign into the into the final days in the November election. We we just want everyone to be encouraged and inspired to come out and vote, uh, whether for my opponent or for my Chris. Certainly, we we prefer the. Uh, Sullivan Chris uh, ticket, but um, this is this is your town. We're all involved. It affects everyone. So so come out and vote. It's your American duty. 
John Sullivan's been our guest this time. He is the Republican candidate for first selectman in uh, Harlington. He is running with uh, Michael Chris. And, uh, of course, again, Harlington, one of the races we're going to be following. John, thanks for being our guest on the show. Dale, thank you for this opportunity. Best of luck coming up on Tuesday, and we'll be following closely. Thank you.